I'm a, a journalist and I wanted to have a place to work. I had been spending a bit of money to rent an office space and so having this space at home basically allows me to do the work that I want to do. I also wanted to be able to work from home so that I would be able to really kind of focus on making it a nice space and spending time here. Okay, so we're just going to come out my back door here. Ooh, that's some yummy basil. It was a den of filth. <laughs> there was just concrete sheeting across here with no windows and it was just covered with all kinds of refuse from years of housemates who'd come and gone and you couldn't even get in here basically. The door wouldn't open properly and um, the concrete sheeting was cracked and it was just a disaster. In fact, I, I kind of, I didn't even think of it as part of this house. I'd lived here for mm. eight years, but it wasn't even sort of a, a space in, in, the, in the house for me. Like, mm. it didn't exist. So my friends, this is the shed. Stand by for transformation. This on the floor is a big pile of lard, which is Douglas fir or Oregon. Uh, sticks. They used to make lard and plaster walls with. And some friends of mine went to a house in Footscray and pulled them out and they gave me this massive giant pile. It's going to be part of the most beautiful little writer's cabin you have ever seen. So I guess the first thing was to clean out the space and then demolish the front wall. We knocked out the concrete floor and then I, I salvaged the bricks and we paved it. That was the real sort of transformation when that, when that happened. And that all took probably a few weeks to do all that. And then I built the four walls. So I think it probably takes about two days for each wall. So I think for the, the three main walls and the ceiling, it's probably about a week and a half. Um, and then I salvaged the windows and the door and fixed them up and painted them. And um, we made this sort of special front panel, um, which took a bit of time to do, mm. to, to put the windows and the door in. Of dedicated work, it's, I th think it would have been a month. And that'll just run around that because it's so runny. I scavenged some bricks from a skip up the road, about 200 bricks or so. Now we are making the, the mortar. like the um, sort of thing that a Frisian cow would do. There were lots of steps in making it, but essentially we've built a little um, building within a building and it's um, four wall panels and then the ceiling. And um, the beauty of that is that um, I'm a renter here and so that when I go I can just take it and re-erect it at another, another place wherever I move to. Kind of jumping out of bed with a list of things to do on my shed. So um, now I'm just going to show you the floor and what it looks like. You can see it's kind of a little bit dusty and grey. Hopefully when I'm done and they're dry again, they're going to be shiny red. What do you think of this? I think I made a marginal improvement. There's a brick down here I reckon looks pretty good. Look at that one. Boom. I've had help from my friends um, Mike and Andrew and Matt um, and so they work in a store up um, just kind of a block away in Carlton and build a lot of um, beautiful small um, dwellings, small buildings. Yeah, just see if you can zero in on the subtle uh, excitement on Michael Green's face. Yeah. I'm just thinking of all the, across. all the beautiful um, words that I'm about to write in this world. Space. The walls are just joined at the corner um, with long screws, so each corner joint, there's a, um, an upright that, that screws into the two adjoining walls, and then it's just a matter of unscrewing them. Michael, what are you doing? Have you got nuts or something? <laughs> I'm just trying to get another bit of timber out, mate. Oh, you're bloody gardening. <laughs> Butcher boy in here. Like, <laughs> butcher boy. <laughs> it's a few butcher boys. Have you guys in the east? Sort of slater. I, I love the idea of having home, like a home-based work life, because 
you know, typically for, mo for most people, houses are, I guess, places where you consume things. You just, you go out and you, you buy your food and you buy your, your products and your TV and your furniture and you bring it all back to home and then you just sort of, you're there kind of passively. There's a great opportunity to make your home productive as well, whether it's, you know, in a garden or, or working from home or, you know, making it a space where, where that's more dynamic, where people are doing things. First, gluing upwards. It's hard. <laughs> you like the simplicity of the design, the streamlined thinness. Would you like to make a speech, Michael? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you Save think? For later. what do you think, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> you think about it. I need time to write something. Okay. When, when you guys finish, if you could hurry up, <laughs> then I'll, that. I'll write something. I think um, you're suffering from um, acute um, happiness, and I think that you should go and see a doctor. Oh, holy hell, man. All right. Did you just put the final screw in that? Absolutely. Well, I can put another one in if you want, if you want to. Um, Mike? Yeah. I'm just going to cut into this like a psychopath. Do you mind? Do it. In the course of building it, I can't, I can't help but turn my mind to the fact that there are so many people in a similar situation, so many houses around here with a, with a small courtyard and limited space, who might be able to do something similar. You know, it can be used for an extra room for a, a teenager or for a visitor or, you know, to rent it out on Airbnb or an office. You know, another little space that someone could, you know, turn their hobby into a little pastime that might help to help them to pay their rent or pay off their mortgage or um, th there's just so much opportunity I think. I really didn't think that this was going to happen today. I'm getting a bit weepy. You know I think a lot of people are trying to figure out ways to have a meaningful work life and in a way that they can perhaps spend more time at home or, or spend more time with their family and uh, yeah, I was just super basic. I really love the fact that it's made from recycled materials, the stuff that otherwise would have been put into landfill. And it's been made by hand. It's beautiful also because I've had a lot of help from my friends to make it, mm. and my family as well. My, my dad helped me um, to build the wall, so it's got a lot of meaning because of that shared endeavour and the support that I, that I had to do it. And also it was great fun. Mm to make. Um, I think it kind of represents my sort of attempt to live a life that I, that I want to as well. So it, it helps to give me the sort of freedom to write the kinds of things that I want and yeah, and to be independent. Now it sort of happens when people come, when my friends come over to visit, we just come and sit out. Yeah. <laughs> come and sit out in here. So now my task is to make the inside of the house as beautiful as this so that will actually use it. <laughs> it's, it's this interesting thing that you can observe with this where there's, if there's a beautiful space people kind of gravitate towards it without really thinking about it. You just feel more comfortable in it. Yeah, one of my friends told me that she thought it was a work of art <laughs> and the best kind of art because it was practical as well as beautiful. I think everyone's really surprised even though I, I was telling them how beautiful it was going to be. People are, are amazed at what a lovely space it is. Yeah, so this is a real highlight, I think, of the space. A single board of cedar. It's quite an amazing piece because it's one solid bit. Maybe we'll have uh, streets and courtyards full of multi-purpose buildings where people are doing their own little kind of creative endeavours and, and the kind of life of the city is going to feed off it. <laughs>